Hello guys and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you how you can create riser and transition effects on the Yamaha Montage and the Modi X. On the previous video I showed you how to do the transition effects and these riser effects on Retrolog inside Cubase, so on this video I'm going to show you how you do this on the Montage and the Modi X from scratch. I had quite a few requests about this, I read the comments, so I thought it was a great idea to make a video like this. I have no idea what I'm gonna do, but I'm going to show you how I think about it. I haven't planned anything, I haven't created any sound before this, but I'm going to show you the way I think about it and how I approach the synthesis engine inside the montage and the Modi X to create those sounds. And I'll show you that it's actually pretty easy. So let's get started, let's start sound designing. So as I said, I haven't prepared anything for this. So on this video, I'm going to show you the exact philosophy and the exact method that I'm applying when I want to create new sounds. So, for example, risers. Uh, the first thing I want to think about is which engine I should use. And in this case, I'm going to go to category search, I'm going to go to initial, and to be honest with you, you can create risers with pretty much both engines on the Montage and the Modi X. The AWM2 will work, the FMX engine will also work. Um, so, it all depends on what you want to do. For me, in this case, I think I'm going to go for the FMX engine because it gives me a little bit more flexibility when I want to have multiple sine waves at the same time in one single performance. I mean, you can do this on the AWM2, but we're going to use the AWM2 for something else. Let's select the FMX engine in this case. So we have determined what engine we're going to use. And of course, I'm going to go into my edit page and um, and now I'm going to start creating a riser. Um, so, what do we need? The first thing that I would start with would be probably a sine wave that goes up once you hit the key, right? So, it goes up in pitch. So, I think the best algorithm for this would be algorithm number one. And why? Because we have eight pure sine waves that don't necessarily interact with each other, they don't interact with each other actually. And we also have number one which can have the feedback uh, and we can have like a soul tooth wave in this case. If we go all the way up with the feedback, let's try this. I'm gonna have just uh, operator one now, let's... Okay. And then we're going to go all the way up with the feedback. So we have this nice sound straight away. Now, but let's start with a sine wave. I'm going to go to operator one, and now I'm going to have to start building the sound. And it's actually very, very easy. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that we have like a sound that goes up in pitch, right? Because we want to have this riser sound. So I'm going to go to my frequency, and here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a very slow attack in the pitch envelope, right? So let's go like this. Let's go to, let's say, 60 or something like this. And now let's change the initial pitch to all the way down, 50. And let's see how this sounds now. Okay, so this is straight away, we have a very easy sine wave riser, and of course I can play it in various pitches. Okay, now, there is one thing I want to change, and this is the initial level. It's very it's very Im immediate, you know, I want to go to my level, to my amplitude envelope and change the attack, make it a little bit slower, like this. Let's see. You know, and if you play the notes at a different time, you start, you have a different beginning, then you get these very interesting sounds. If I play them at the same time, they have the same phase. 
But if I play something like this, You know, you can get all these different sounds. Now, what else can we do? I'm going to actually uh, go and create the same thing on operator number two. So I'm going to go to frequency, change the attack. Let's make it, I don't know, let's go 58. And change the initial pitch. Change the attack here as well. Yeah, 52. Let's go 52 with this one as well. And now I'm going to go to operator number one and I'm going to change the spectral wave and make it, let's say, you know, all one with quite a bit of skirt. Let's see what it sounds like now. You know, all these things. Now, what we have is we have operator one, which is like a... It's almost like a sawtooth, and then I still have the sine wave for my low end. We still need that sine wave. And now I can go to operator number three, do exactly the same thing. Like that. And on this case, I can go, let's say, let's go to the, the odds waveform and let's bring it up. Don't forget, you can bring up your operators using the sliders on the Montage and the Modi X. Let's go higher for this one. You know, you have all these things and of course, if you change the attack, then you can determine how fast or how slow you will get these rises. Now, a very cool thing that we can do at this point is we can start introducing some interesting uh, modulation. So I can go to my common now and go to my mod control. And now what I want to do is maybe I want to add some pitch modulation to these rises. So I can go to my second LFO here. And now I can set up my modulation my pitch modulation depth. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start assigning things. So for example, maybe I want to go to my depth and possibly assign it. I'm pressing the control assign button here and uh, assign it to the mode wheel. So now, okay, that's great. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to assign the speed of the LFO to my super knob. Control assign, move the super knob, and there we go, now we have it assigned. So let's go by polar in this case and let's see what we get. Okay, so now I can even change, I think I'm gonna go for possibly like a uh, salt of down. You know, you get all these crazy effects. Now, let's add some effects. Speaking of it, um, let's go to our, our part effects and I'm going to go to general and add a little bit of reverb. And I also want to add a delay to this. So I don't need to, uh, you know, sacrifice my insert effects in this case. I'm going to use the variation send for the delay. And quite a few of you guys have been asking me how to change the variation send type. I'm going to show you now how you do it. Um, you go to your common settings, as you can see here. So for your performance settings, this is performance level. And then you go to effects. And then you will find the variation send type right there. So you, now I can select pretty much from all these different effects. In this case, I'm gonna go for delay and I'm gonna go for, let's say a tempo cross delay, add a little bit of feedback. And now I can go back to my part one. See, select part one again. And now I'm going to add the delay to my sound.
Okay, so very, very easily we have a sound that is really, really complex. I can keep at adding more, I can add up to eight operators, and of course I can start, so let's uh, say I want to go to operator number four and change the attack again, let's go like this and change the initial one, and in this case maybe I want to go for, I don't know, like a resonant uh, with skirts and resonance, and let's bring it up. Okay, now, this is just the whole concept, you know, I mean, you can start doing whatever you want with this after you've started creating all the sounds. You can change the attack, you can vary the attack between the different operators, and don't forget, we're still on one part. So what I'm going to do now is, in some very simple steps, I'm going to make this even more complex and even with more layers and I'm going to create a little bit of a hybrid version of this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my performance, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift and Edit on my buttons right here. Shift and Edit. So you get this dialog. And I'm going to copy part one to part two. Let's do this. So now we have two parts. We have the same part as a duplicate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my part number one, edit, go to my common settings, and I'm going to go a little bit to the left, okay? We're going to make this wider now. And now I'm going to go to part two, okay? And I'm gonna go a little bit to the right. But there's one more step that you need to do if you want to make this even wider. Just go to the delay length here and delay one of the parts a little bit so we can get a very very wide sound and they're not in phase with each other so let's go a little bit like this maybe 20 let's see i'm gonna play by ear that's a little bit too long yeah that's better You know, and you can create all these interesting sounds. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, maybe, why not add a little bit of distortion to part one. Let's go to the, our effects. That's why I'm saving the effects, the insert effects for this. And I'm going to go to insert one. And now I'm going to go to my miscellaneous and I'm going to add the wave folder. Okay, the wave folder is a great distortion effect, but it doesn't completely destroy the sound. It kind of leaves all the characteristics intact, but it gives quite a nice character to this. So now let's try and see how this sounds. So, this makes it a little bit more aggressive and as you can see I'm using the dry wet parameter so that I can blend the original with the distortion. Okay. Now, one more thing. I mean, as you can see, with this one, you can do whatever you want. Now you can change the pitch envelopes. You can do all these things. But what I'm going to do now is one extra step. I'm going to go here and add another part. In this case, I'm going to add an AWM2 part. And why am, am I doing this? Because now I want to add a noise element to this. Make it a little bit more hybrid. Add a little bit of noise sweep to this. And what I can do is I can go to my edit page on the AWM2 part and in this case it's actually very very simple I'm going to go to element one and start 
I'm gonna look for a noise waveform. Okay, and in this case, let's see, maybe white noise would be okay. Let's see. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, let's focus on this. I'm going to solo this part, okay? So we can focus on the noise element. Uh, click Edit. And now I'm going to, instead of using the pitch envelope this time, I'm going to use the filter envelope. So I'm going to go to my filter. And I'm going to, let's say, go to a nice analog style filter here. Maybe a little bit of resonance. And I'm going to... Go to my filter envelope and change the attack a little bit. Now if I want to make it a little bit more dark in the beginning. Let's go and add a little bit more depth. And make it a little bit darker now. See? Let's go slower. We're going to try and match the other elements now. And I'm going to add the same effects. I'm going to go to my common. And see, I don't have to sacrifice any inserts. I can add reverb sand. I can add variation sand. Okay, and now I think I might need to adjust the uh, attack of the filter. Let's go here and change the attack. It uh, needs to be a little bit slower. Let's see, maybe around 98 or something. And now let's listen to what we have using the mod wheel and the super knob and see how many variations we can get. You know, so you have like a very organic riser here, not only we can change the length of the envelopes, we can change the length of the pitch, we can introduce modulation with the mode wheel, we can have multiple ones playing at the same time, of course, if I go something like this. You know, it's very organic, it's playable, and as you can see, I have an added tone of effects. Now, of course, your imagination is the limit. That's the beauty when you're using a synthesizer and you're not relying on samples. When you're doing your risers, they are completely customized, they're completely unique, and they are playable. So there you go, guys. This is how you can build riser and transition effects on the Yamaha Montage and the Modi X. And of course, on the Montage, there are so many options, so it's mind-blowing in how many ways you can create all these different effects. And the synthesis engine is so sophisticated with the super knob, with all the controls that you can assign that Risers is an easy thing to do on the Montage and the Modi X. If you found this video useful or interesting or it helped you create the sounds that you have in mind, please subscribe to the channel. I have more videos coming up. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with whoever you feel that they might find it useful. And until next time, make some great music and some great sounds.